Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Coach. I am your host, Coach Marcus Smith. Uh, today, we've got a great guest. This is Coach Dan Bethel. Um, he is the head women's volleyball coach at Pima Community College, a longtime coach here at Pima Community College. Uh, and Coach Dan Bethel actually just made history. For the first time in program history, they went to the national tournament. Uh, so we're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to him about the, uh, this upcoming season, his expectations, and we're just going to have a conversation with Coach. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Marcus. Thanks for having me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so kind of let's just start. You just made history. For the first time in program history, like I just said, you guys went to the national tournament. What was that like? Obviously, you can boil it down into some some simple thoughts and, you know, things like unbelievable and amazing and and super fun. But, um, you know, having a little time to process and think back and, um, you know, kind of relive some of those moments, um, it it was just really special. Um, I know the girls that are still with us, uh, they talk about it all the time. Um, you know, and share those things with our new players, um, and certainly with uh, with each other. But you know, having uh, not only the opportunity to compete at that level, but um, you know, experience that uh, the trip and the camaraderie and kind of all the things that go along with a national tournament. You know, there's a little bit more. Um, I don't know what you want to say, like pomp and circumstance to it. Uh, you know, a little bit of ceremony, I guess you could say. Right. And so experiencing those things is uh, different for a lot of people and, and certainly enjoyable and, and memorable. What is that energy like? I mean, because when we went to the national tournament for golf, we only took one one person. Right. You know, it's just me and a player. The energy is as fun as we make it. But what is it like taking a whole team – what is that energy like, um, and how does that build momentum going yeah. into this season? Uh, the energy is unbelievable. It's you know, and, and honestly, I, I don't have a reference, but I think under normal circumstances, it's even more than it was last year because there weren't as many fans. Um, right. You know, when we were playing our matches, there were a lot of other teams in the stands watching. There were some fans. Um, and even then that you could feel the energy, um, you know, not just the fans rooting, but just kind of a, a buzz in the, in the venue. Um, the venue itself is terrific for what we were doing. And I think that helped a lot. You know, it wasn't just a college gym. It's a, a little bit bigger facility, uh, a smaller arena, kind of, yeah. if you could imagine a small like NBA arena. Okay. Um, but you know, 5,000 fans if it was full, um, something like that. And so uh, having those other teams there, and then certainly when we weren't playing, we would go and watch other teams play. And just that interaction was uh, definitely a new experience for a lot of us, I think. Right. So you talked about the audience playing a role. Um, last year, we didn't have fans in the gym for home home right. events. We just had kind of the the supporting staff, athletic right. department, um, and it was still a lot of fun. But mm-hmm. how much does an audience play into your sport? How much does a home home court advantage right. with your home fans? How 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 much does that play into it? I think it's a huge deal. Um, not only are there for the kids, there's usually some. You know, if we're at home, you know, they know the people, right? Whether it's the golf team or the baseball team coming to watch and all those kids know each other and and hang out with each other and things like that. That's certainly a part of it. But also just the excitement when um, we make a great play or we're, you know, being really determined or something like that. Um, I think the fans certainly appreciate that and uh, cheer and create kind of that extra buzz that uh, the girls certainly feel, Um, you know, and on the other side of it, we go to lots of places and play and, um, you know, it's difficult to play uh, against that sometimes when the other team has a huge fan support and, you know, you can kind of tell they're, they're rooting yeah. against you and, <laughs> and uh, you know, wanting to see you fail and those sorts of things. Um, and that's all part of it, right? 
Right. That's all part of part of sports, especially the college sports. The yeah. fans, you know, they're in basketball. They're the sixth man. Right. And I assume it's the same for you guys. Um, you know, those fans are your team. Where where are we at? What are your expectations going into this season, especially after last year and making and making a run, right. having some success at the end of the year? How do you as a coach prepare for that? And what what are your expectations going on? Yeah. So I think it's even a little harder to have accurate expectations in terms of, um, you know, being realistic about where we where we're starting and where we see ourselves finishing. And so a lot of our process, we we start the same every year. You know, we don't uh, try to overreach and and try to um, just because we did one thing doesn't automatically mean we're you know going to do it again or or do something better. Although when we talk about our goals, we certainly uh, put those things in our sights. You know, uh, winning our region and getting back to nationals, um, our team, and certainly myself. Uh, we now we see what that really looks like, and so it's uh, hopefully a little more accurate in terms of being able to say okay, I want that, and these are the things that I know we need to do to get there. Um, But in terms of expectations, I think, you know, we kind of have the same thing every year in terms of working our butts off and being great teammates and, uh, you know, getting better every day and things like that. Those are the real expectations, and hopefully – they add up, and you know, if if we're good enough at the right time, we we make right. all that stuff line up and and win some big matches and and get back to where we want to go. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think as any coach, you can't really expect to go in and say you're going to win a national title. You got to do sure. everything you can in that day that gets you to a For national sure. title. Uh, you kind of started to talk about it, but. I'll kind of just ask it again, but what are, if you could say three keys that mm-hmm. you run your program based off of, yeah. what would those be? Definitely trying to, uh, you know, outwork our opponents, uh, you know, having a really high level of, you know, physical engagement and, and just kind of working our butts off all the time. I think that's something that we can control, um, you know, and we've been lucky to get a lot of players that buy into that. And that's certainly something we ask everyone to buy into. Um, I also think we have to have this idea of getting better all the time, you know, just get a little bit better each day, a little bit better each time you uh, touch the ball. Um, I think that's something that really helps us. Um, As a two-year college, especially, you know, a lot of these kids hopefully are going to continue playing after Pima. And so if they're the same player after they're done at Pima as they were when they walked in the door, you know, that doesn't bode well for, you know, kind of what we're doing with them. Right. So definite, uh, you know, evolution and and getting better is uh, a big part of it. And then I think the last thing is, um, you know, being great people and being great teammates. Um, You know, we kind of have this idea that the 14 of us are going to be better than than one you know we play teams all the time that have one or two great players very talented players and we feel like our whole group you know if we're together and we're supporting each other and and helping and pushing each other in the right way our group is going to be better than those one or two players uh what they can do individually yeah i i 100 percent agree with that um, and those are good exp- those are good keys to kind of run the program based off of, um, and all of them are controllables. Right. You know, you can control all of those, yep. just like attitude, your work ethic. Yep. Um, I think that builds a great program. And you kind of talked about we're a two year school, so mm-hmm. we're trying to push a kid to the next level. Yeah. Hopefully How- not the stopping point. Right. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we're not that the last time they play volleyball or golf. Right. How do you as a coach? And, and I mean, it, two years is a good amount of time, but it's short still. Oh, yeah. You know, after your first season, you're only thinking you only got one more season. How are you pushing in such a short amount of time to get the best out of your girls? Yeah. Well, the reality for us is it's uh, it's only 18 months because uh, a player comes to us as a freshman and they jump into their freshman season right away as a fall sport. You know, so uh, preseason is 
you know, kind of drinking water through a fire hose sort of analogy right. in terms of <laughs> learning how to work hard and, and learning how we play the game and things like that. Um, they obviously get through their, their freshman year. And then really that spring is their opportunity for true development in uh, between their freshman and their sophomore seasons. Um, then you come back and you play your sophomore season, hopefully, and um, you know you can control more of those things individually and, and maybe contribute to the team more and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and then after that uh, sophomore year, you know our kids are usually still uh, – here and finishing school, graduating, those sorts of things. But then it's like they're already kind of looking forward to their next opportunity. And, you know, not to say they don't grow after their sophomore year with us, which they certainly do, but it's kind of growth for for them as opposed to growth for our program. Right. And so we certainly support that and we need that to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it's a it's a short time for sure. Yeah, I didn't even think about the whole, if you're a fall sport, you right. get the freshman right away. I mean, because yep. our sport, we get our freshman the entire year. Right. Then we play, and then they do a whole full year. Yep. Um, and kind of that unselfishness of the program and you as a coach by saying, they're going to still get better, but they're not necessarily going to benefit the program. So when you're bringing in recruits to kind of replace those rules, mm-hmm. what what are you looking in recruits? What type of kid do you want? Well, obviously, they have to be talented to a certain level. Yeah. You know, they have to be able to play the game at this level and this speed. And, um, you know, the our backyard, Tucson, there's uh, lots of kids that are capable of, you know, uh, talent-wise and kind of game-wise able to compete at that level. And obviously, we try to get the best ones we can. Um, but if we have maybe a little bit bigger pool to draw from, you know, we're looking at things like, uh, you know, their work ethic and how they uh, work with their teammates, you know, what kind of uh, character do they have? What kind of a student are they? Certainly um, we want, you know, kids that are not only going to be successful in terms of passing their classes, but, you know, they're achieving, you know, whether it's becoming an All-American or, you know, just uh, getting on the honor roll and, and things like that. You know, we, I think all of the things that we kind of, uh, you know, expect is that dangerous word, but we like to have are all pushing in that direction of, of growth and constant improvement and, and achievement. Right. So I, I was thinking when, when we did the intro, we said longtime coach at Pima. How many years are you going on? Is it 20 this will be 22 22 yeah what is it like to be at a college watching that not only athletics but watching that college itself grow watching academics grow and watching athletics grow what's that been like uh it's it's been a real roller coaster to be honest you know when you first start coaching and i was probably about your age when i started coaching and so you know kind of having the those bright eyes and and seeing everything and you know, being super excited about uh, small opportunities, I think, is is a huge deal, right? That's how we all get started. Right. And, and it's almost like, you know, the vision starts to get a little bit bigger as you experience more and kind of see things. And so being in the same place, I've, I've seen a lot, you know, uh, so a lot of good, some not so good, um, both in our department and, and the college in general. But the great thing and probably one of the reasons that I've I've been here for so long is the people that you work with. Right. And just being able to um, develop relationships with other coaches, uh, support staff, all the people in the college um, that you kind of interact with on a pretty consistent basis. You know, the, the instructors, the counselors, advisors, you know, uh, certainly there's people that come and go, but. There's also been a lot of consistent people that have really been uh, engaged in our athlete success. And so being able to work with all those people makes it not only a fun job, but a rewarding job. Yeah, I think that definitely definitely is the recipe to 
staying for and having longevity at a college. Yeah. I think um, as I think of myself and my age and I go, all right, how long do you want to want to be here? Uh, And then you start meeting the coaches and you start meeting our support staff. You start meeting everybody at the college. And then I start going to bed at night going, you know what? I could spend a couple more years here. And then that's when it turns into (laughs) the 20 year career here. Right. Hopefully. Hopefully. (laughs) So you talked about kind of the people here and not that this question, you know, makes you say somebody here, but who has kind of been the biggest influence on your coaching career? Gotcha. Um, Well, I think it's kind of two sided for me in terms of volleyball. um, I have a couple of friends that are professional coaches, not not that we're not professional coaches, but they coach at the professional level. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of learning the game and kind of understanding things at a, you know, a lot of times at a level that we can't apply here. Right. Um, you know, those are kind of my mentors, um, you know, a little bit outside of Pima. But I think definitely here at Pima, there have been a lot of coaches that, you know, I've uh, learned from and relied on. Um you know, Coach Todd, our basketball coach, um, Coach Kaz, our men's soccer coach, um, Jim, our athletic director, and, you know, used to be the football coach, you know, those guys that have certainly been here for a long time as well. Um, You know, even our trainers and, you know, people outside of the department, our advisors. I feel like I can learn from everybody and certainly something that I like to do is, is try to be better at, at everything all the time. And so, you know, a lot of coaching is, um, you know, developing relationships and, you know, being task oriented and all that sort of stuff. And so it's not just the X's and O's of the game that, uh, you're always learning to get better at. And so, you know, people outside of our department, um, certainly influence us in those ways, I think. As a college coach, because I think a lot of people, and when this is the real reason why we started this podcast, is not everybody gets to see what being a college coach is like. Not everybody gets to see what being a college athlete is like. Right. And kind of to on your X's and O's points, how much of your job percentage-wise mm-hmm. is the X's and O's of volleyball? Gotcha. That's a tough question. Um I think it varies depending on the time of the season. Um, So like right now, our X's and O's are a lot more uh, systemic for the, you know, our team systems kind of stuff. You know, where, how do we play defense? What does our offense look like? You know, those sorts of things, maybe a little less individual, um, you know, development and um, those sorts of things, just because we're, we're playing in two days. And right. uh, we've got to be obviously ready. Our, our whole group needs to be ready to do that. Um, but I think, you know, in the spring and kind of in the off season, there's a lot of time individually developing techniques and, you know, physical development and things like that. And so if we were to kind of put a percentage, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 percent is is you know, learning the game and understanding the game, um, and the technical side of things. And then maybe that other 30 ish percent is the, you know, how do we work together? How do we take care of our business? Uh, you know, those sorts of things. Right. You said business. Yeah. Running a program is what I've found out in the last year is like running a business. Sure. Yeah. Um, one it's, it's hard. Mm. Uh, I don't think, Nothing comes easy in this industry. But two, kind of to jump back, you were talking about everybody we have here, our support specialists, our athletic department. Um, You know, it really does take, and everybody says it takes a village to raise a kid. It almost takes a village to run a successful program. It absolutely does. Yeah. How How much of the athletic department do you kind of rely on when it comes to your team and your team's success? The simple answer is everybody. Um, You know, obviously there are some people in our department that have uh, specific responsibilities to some behind the scenes stuff, you know, whether it's uh, getting paperwork turned in and travel plans and things like that. 
Um, so obviously those people help you with that part of the, the job, but, you know, things like, uh, running our home events, uh, you know, our home games and, um, that sort of stuff is we, as coaches, um, help each other out. Right. You know, uh, our, our team is volleyball team. We help a lot with our basketball teams, whether it's, you know, running a snack bar or setting up the gym for their matches and, or excuse me, games, um, that sort of stuff. And other teams do that for us as well. And so not only those coaches, but a lot of times the student athletes were out there supporting each other. Right. Right. I think that that definitely plays a part in the whole community of the of right. one, the athletic department. And I think that's why we as a department have been so successful. Agreed. Um, so let's kind of get on the student athletes. Is there any recruits that you've brought in or even any returning player that's made some significant progress over the summer uh, that you're beyond excited to one coach, but to just to see what they, what they do out there, what they get to achieve? Yeah. So this, recruiting class and I think all the coaches will um, probably echo similar sentiments is there's probably a little more question with uh, kids that we brought in because of uh, COVID restrictions and you know maybe kids not playing in the same way that they did uh, as high schoolers and club kids um, and then maybe us not being able to see them as much or see them in person even or things like that. And so um, surprised is a pretty big word, I guess, because hopefully part of that is you're not surprised because you're doing your job, you know, you're paying attention and you're looking for the right things. (laughs) But I think there have definitely been some good surprises in our our recruiting class. Um, You know, not complete surprises, but certainly once we got – those guys in our environment, um, you know, they reacted and responded the way that we hoped they would. And so that's certainly a, a good surprise for us, I think. Right. Um, so it sounds like you got a good class coming in. For um, sure. Um, you know, some kids that work real hard, and I think that goes a long way. Whether the talent is there or not, working hard builds talent as well. Agreed. When it comes to college sports, and let's just talk about, say, you know, you've got a player – that goes from Division One college to the NFL mm-hmm. or Major League Baseball, and everyone says he can't hang in the first three months of the season. Well, I think we have to understand that they have to take time to, one, get their feet wet, understand right. what it's like to compete with. Now, as a fall sport, not having that much time to get your feet wet, how do you manage that? Because it seems like that you're going into – a recruit comes in, mm-hmm. you get as much practice as you can, get their feet wet, but then you're off. Right. How do you get a kid comfortable quickly so it's not by game five, six, seven, you're like, okay, now we finally – everyone's comfortable. Because by that point, in my in my opinion, or I would think um, a sport like you guys, it would almost be like playing catch-up at that point. So how do you as a coach manage that? It. It, it is playing catch up, unfortunately. And sometimes um, you, the word you used is appropriate. You just manage it as best you can, you know, and, and sometimes it's conversations like, hey, you know what? I know you don't feel good about this right now, but you got to just keep trying and it's going to work out. Um, so I think when we kind of think about our whole team, um, that's why it's so important for us to be great teammates because the people – that are struggling maybe the other ones were there a year ago yeah and so they need to be able to look back and and look at their teammates who are are a little bit uncomfortable and are like man i thought i was doing the right thing but i'm not quite getting it and you know coaches continuing to challenge me and all these sorts of things um, you know, they're looking back and they need to be reaching back and bringing those kids with them, you know, right. and, and obviously letting them know, Hey, I was there. You're going to be just fine. Just keep going. And you know, it's all going to work out sort of stuff. And I think we as coaches hope that every team we have, we have at least one or two leaders that right. does that for our freshmen. Right. Which kind of brings me to my next question. How much do you rely on player leadership mm. to lead your team? Because obviously, you know, us being head coaches, we're the leaders of our team. Right. But I truly don't think we can lead everything. We can't be in every conversation because at some point it's like, you know, they listen to us, 
but right. there's always going to be a time where they don't. Yeah. How much do you rely on, say, a student athlete becoming that leader for your team? Um, I think it's one of the most important things um, because, like you said, we uh, there are definitely times when um, what we say or what we're trying to do doesn't come across the right way or whatever. Um, you know, and the the players will always kind of have a way to re-communicate that or, um, you know, kind of revisit things in the locker room, so to speak, or, yeah. you know, outside of the gym or whatever it might be. And, you know, so really we've tried to bring our student leadership to the forefront of kind of what we're doing, um, not only to you know, make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. But I feel like we've been able to take steps forward in terms of what we can actually accomplish when the the players and there are, like you're kind of describing, there's usually one or two players that have, you know, the traditional kind of leadership qualities, um, you know, willing to be, you know, a little confrontational or willing to kind of stand up and say, hey, I know the right thing to do right now. Um, but at the same time, we talk about developing lots of different kinds of leaders. Right. And, you know, so for our 14 players, um, every one of our players ha is contributing in some way for us as a leader. Um, you know, and, and that includes our freshmen. And, and that can be certainly a difficult thing. But I think it's necessary. I think, um, you know, the the traditional, you know, one or two leaders and then all the followers tends to leave too many people behind kind of at this level because um, we don't have enough time to develop that. Right. Um, you know, you don't have a senior or a junior that's been in your program for four years and that really kind of knows all the in and outs so that when that younger player, you know, that's maybe four years younger than them, that's a natural, like, I'm looking up to this person and I'm going to defer kind of my own uh, process to them a little bit. Um, I think it's much more difficult for us because it's one year apart. You know, right. a lot of those kids have known each other through high school and through club. And so it's like, oh, no, no, it's just uh, it's just Marcus. You know, yeah. he's how is Marcus going to, you know, all of a sudden now stand up and, hey, we've got to do these things. And so right. we we obviously need those things. But we also definitely try to empower a larger kind of larger group of people to take some leadership responsibilities. OK, yeah, that sounds like. Um yeah, especially because we talked about we don't have seniors. Right. We don't have juniors. We don't mm -hmm. have three years for somebody to be in our program, know our system. Yep. And it's almost like we're asking our student athletes within one year to, if you're going to be the leader, you got to progress as the leader. So when these freshmen come in and say they know you, say they don't know you, you've got to lead this team. Yep. Do you think that that is tough for as young as our kids are, being I, sophomores, when they have to lead a team? I think it's really hard. I think it's um, something that even being a high-performing athlete a lot of times hasn't been asked of them before. Um, a lot of times hasn't been th those parts of the team game especially have not really kind of been jumped into in a lot of uh, ways, you know, uh, whether it's a club program or a high school program. Um, I think – you know, and, and I do know some good examples in our, our community of coaches that do that, you know, that pay attention to those things. But yeah. I think all in all, the majority, those, uh, you know, leadership and team building and that sort of stuff is uh, not really paid attention to for the majority of players. Right. So as, as we begin to kind of wrap up, I got one more question for yeah. you. And I think I enjoy this question the most because of my age. Because when I ask it, it brings you back to my age. Yeah. As, you know, where you are in your career now and how long you've been at Pima, what does Coach Dan Bethel, what does he tell 21, 22-year-old Dan? What does he tell that, you know, beginning coach going into his career? What, what are you telling him right now? I would say pay more attention to the players and pay less attention to the game. 
Um, when I was a really young coach, I was all about the technical, you know, do this and at this happens and do this and kind of all the X's and O's and, and that sort of stuff. And certainly, like we talked about, that's an important part of, right. of uh, how we find success. But I think certainly my first few years, I, I paid zero attention to um, personalities and how kids worked with each other and, you know, kind of good traits and maybe some more difficult traits. And, right. you know, certainly when you're not paying attention to those things, things will happen, you know, uh, re in terms of relationships and, and whatnot. But I just, yeah, whew, that stuff went right over my head for a couple of years. <laughs> and uh, I think that's one of the biggest deals in, in teaching and, and uh, leading athletes is you've got to figure out how they work. Yeah. Um, and then obviously cultivate some, some good things that help them change if they need to. And, um, you know, it allows them to hopefully understand that you care about them and that you want success for them, even though maybe you're telling them something that they don't want to hear. Right. All about the relationship. Yep. Exactly. I love it, coach. I love it. Well, coach, thank you so much for being on here. My pleasure. Um, volleyball plays their first, um, kind of preseason matches, preseason games going into their season this weekend. So we wish them the best of luck. Um, and in the meantime, in all times, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.